Growing up, there was nothing more that I wanted than to become a real estate investor. But it wasn't until I turned 31 years old that I actually got the opportunity to make it a career. You see, the first few properties that I purchased, I didn't really have the credit to do it. So what I had to do was get really creative. So I went in, we bought cash, I put in half and my partner put half and I bought half and then my parents put half on another house. So we did two properties all within the first year. Now my goal was to actually one day uh, develop a portfolio of properties because I kept hearing like guys like Robert Kiyosaki and a lot of other people who were becoming extremely wealthy and doing that method. But unfortunately for me, I didn't have that option. And if I went the hard money route, which probably wouldn't even worked for me because I didn't have good credit, I would have been paying 15 to 18% interest rates. It was, it was nuts. So what I ended up doing was I sold those two properties and I made enough money on those two to continue buying cash. Now I did that for a while until 2014. Now in 2014, I got the opportunity I've been waiting for, for pretty much my entire life. There was a bank that was willing to finance me. There was a bank who actually was going to take me out of a property. I was, I was so happy. It was like one of the greatest feelings. So I purchased this property for $40,000, a two family house. And then we put about 25 grand into it. Uh, it wasn't one of the biggest deals I ever did, but it was just, it meant so much to me because I actually was able to walk into the bank and refinance that property for 75,000, which was incredible because that day, I just felt like my entire life had changed. You know, even though it wasn't a ton of money we walked away with, but it changed because I was proving the model. The model that I had been seeking for the longest time where I could buy a property, fix it and then pull out all the money that we had into it and then go do it again at another property. So they pretty much just opened up the floodgates for me from that point on. Later on, we went and ended up doing a bunch more properties, but that property that I just mentioned, even though it didn't seem like a lot of money at the time, a few years later, just recently, we sold that property for almost $500,000. So almost like a, like a 10X or maybe an 8X on what we invested. Unbelievable profits, guys. And then we also cash flowed that for many, many years. And we went on to do many more properties, about 50 uh, apartment rentals that I had, even though we did a ton of other real estate projects. But the ones that I kept, I ended up hitting a number of about 50 rentals, which to me was a very special number because I went, before I had any properties, I had written on a whiteboard. And that is to acquire 50 rental units. Okay, there you go, guys. What you write on a whiteboard, uh, a lot of times tends to come true. And I have a big whiteboard over here that I'll share with you guys in another video. So the story goes like this. After that, I said to myself, I, I never wanted to be a landlord because I don't like managing properties, but I found out that you could actually hire people that are well qualified and actually like doing the property management stuff. And then all I had to focus on was getting more properties, fixing them up, and then doing the same process over and over again, and I can keep the machine going. Even the renovation part could eventually be uh, delegated to someone who will do the project management. So I pretty much figured it out as you grow. You know, you never really plan for the stuff, but you learn it along the way. And then the pandemic hit. And when the pandemic hit, I was shocked because I felt that the market at that time, there was no signs of cracks. Even though we were overdue for a correction, which every eight to 10 years, statistically, we do get one. And we were like 13 years in. So I knew there was something that was on the horizon, but I didn't know what. So once the pandemic hit, I was kind of caught off guard because I still owned all of these properties. I didn't, I hadn't sold anything. And then after the pandemic um, kind of passed and we saw that home prices started to just go up and up and up and up and up, I said, hey, I think this is going to be an opportunity for us to unload these properties and then make a huge profit and then wait for the market to come back down and then we'll be able to buy back in. Those were my thoughts and I had no idea what was actually going to uh, happen, but I have a feeling that things were going to continue to go up and then suddenly probably hit a, hit a brick wall because all we did from the pandemic was we just kicked the can down the road. Something had to give. So in this video, I'm going to give you my top three reasons why I unloaded all of my properties. Well, majority of my properties. I think I still have like about three left and then the ones I'm buying here in Florida. But the reason why I did it, and I think, and I'm pretty sure right now, I feel like I, I probably made the best move I could have and how I'm preparing myself for the next opportunity. The first reason why I did this is simply because it, the top of the market, guys, real estate is very cyclical very cyclical it's almost you can't really set your clock to it but you know it's going to happen i remember i did a talk at a, a real estate convention for a bunch of investors and my talk was about real estate cycles and how every eight to ten years like i mentioned just just a minute ago we have these kind of like um, either recessions or we have a war or we have something that happens that causes the market to to tank right it just it just always happens and then 
when we were 13 years in and nothing had happened and the s and P's just kept going straight up and up and up, the market was up, the real estate was up, everything was up. Something had to give, right? What was, it, what was gonna happen? So I told everyone at that, at that talk that I had that we're gonna probably see what's called the black swan event. And at that time, the black swan event term wasn't really that popular, wasn't really well known. And said, we don't know what it could be. It could be a war. It could be, you know, something that could, you know, maybe we get an attack here in the United States like we did in 9-11. We just don't know. It could be anything, right? And uh, nobody prepared for, for the pandemic. But the fact that we did get the pandemic, hey, it, it is what it is, right? It's an opportunity for some. And so for some people, it wasn't so good. But the reason I'm telling you this is because that cycle, that top, I feel was overdue. And uh, that's the reason why I'm, I was getting out is because... When you get to a point where there's uh, too much exuberance, too much speculation, too much easy money, low interest rates, you get all these things piling up together, they create this ultimate bubble. And that's what I felt like we were in, especially after the pandemic, when all this free money and, and easy money came around. I said, no, now is the time. <laughs> like now is the time when people are willing to pay you a hundred grand more than last year. I think it's the time. So we took that bet and uh, we actually did really well. Now for me, it was very difficult to sell these properties because there was a lot of multifamilies. It, it was literally, I would say over 20 some uh, multifamilies. So it took the better part of uh, a year or two to sell these things. It wasn't easy, but now I'm better prepared for what's on the horizon. You know, and, and I think that if we look back, we can see it's always, you know, hindsight is 2020. But the signs are always there, but sometimes we choose to ignore them. But that's not what I was going to do. I was going to make sure that I took advantage of that cycle because I did too much. Uh, I did. I did too much research, and I and I've been I've been seriously 100% all in on real estate for the last decade or so. That if I was to, to ignore that, it would have been so uh, irresponsible of me. And for me not to share this message with you would also be very irresponsible to not share the information that, that I've collected over the years. Uh, the second reason I, I'm sharing this information with you is because when the pandemic hit, tenants in New Jersey, they could go without paying their rent pretty much indefinitely. I had a tenant that didn't pay their rent for over two years, I think pro almost approaching three years. There were tenants that I had that just took advantage of the whole situation. They were still working. They still had fancy cars. They were still going out to eat, I'm sure. They were doing all these things that normally they would be considered luxuries, but they wouldn't pay the rent. And they weren't saving the money either to go buy a house. They just weren't paying the rent. So I had to take them to court. But in order to go to court in New Jersey, you had to basically get in line. I remember when I filed my first eviction, they said that uh, you, we can file right now, but the courts are closed and we don't know when they're going to reopen. And then when you do reopen, you'll be in line for months and months and months before you even get a date. So even that was an underestimation. It was actually a couple of years before we were able to get court dates. It got so bad that we actually had to pay tenants to, to leave. We had to pay them actual money to leave. And uh, it was just, uh, it was a nightmare. It was a very horrible situation. But meanwhile, uh, when I moved here to Florida, I went to a real estate meetup groups and uh, the people there were telling me that right after the pandemic, you know, if somebody wouldn't pay the rent, it, it was taking them 30 days to get people evicted if they wouldn't pay the rent. I said, that is incredible because that would make it more of a scalable business. Because imagine if, you're an investor and you're a small investor, you don't have a lot to protect yourself and you have maybe a two family house and both your tenants stop paying you, you can't do anything about that and then you still gotta keep making mortgage payments and if you try to kick them out, you can't because you get in trouble, you gotta go through the court obviously and the help that was available for landlords at that time was only for three family properties and up. So if you had a three unit property, you can apply through the state to try to get some relief but that took month that would take months and months and months actually for one of our properties we're just getting relief now and it's been what maybe a year and a half two years after we've applied it, it it's unbelievable so imagine a small investor would have completely lost their property if they had to wait that long so the laws in that state weren't too friendly so i'm going to rebuild and more landlord friendly states such as uh, well i'm here in florida so i think i'm gonna probably rebuild here as much as possible uh, and then if I have to expand from here, then I'll look at other states that also have really good laws. And you guys should look that up too. Maybe I'll do a video on the most landlord-friendly states later on. But in this video, I'm just covering the three reasons why I, I got out of real estate when I did. Now, before we get into number three, I just got to warn you, there is a huge danger with number three. And I'll explain to you what that is after I give you my third reason why I sold out. So stick around for that. Now, the third reason is because 
cash is king guys right now cash is king and the opportunities that are going to be coming up are worth the risk of being in cash because i'm going to be completely transparent with you like i a lot of times i look at other people in this industry and in, in similar industries and i look at what they have done so for instance let's take a look and i always bring this uh comparison up warren buffett he had not been buying any stock for the last few years a lot of people said he was out of touch he's an old man that he, he doesn't know about technology all of these things but he's just been sitting quietly and the guy built up such a huge war chest where now he's coming out and he's being very selective about the investments he's making but he now he's finally getting opportunities now the same thing happens in real estate in real estate it takes a little bit longer well i should say maybe pretty much a lot longer uh, for real estate prices to adjust once the market adjusts so what we're going to be seeing is something very similar to what uh, to what warren buffett has been able to do is pick up some great deals but right now we haven't gotten to the point yet where we have max pain once we get to the point where we have max pain either because of higher interest rates or less demand in the market and in real estate it's out of fashion and people are just kind of like done with real estate then we'll go start to see some really good prices so that's what i'm waiting for and actually i've i've actually been able to find great deals even in this market believe it or not I've recently started going to some of the sheriff sales uh, down here in, um, in, in Southwest Florida, and I've been seeing that there's been a, a huge opportunity there. So I took the liberty of creating a, a program that I've been working on for, now for the last few months, and, and it'll be out very shortly, where it actually teaches you how to go out and buy sheriff sale properties, auction properties, online auction properties, because this is what I focused on when I, I did all of my real estate in uh, New Jersey. I was actually a trainer for auction.com and I trained over th a few thousand investors over my career and I've been involved in over 2,000 transactions myself and a lot of them were with uh, auctions. Now the auction process guys I'll be honest with you is not something that's readily available for you to learn how to do because the people who, who have attended these for years and years and years and decades are the good old boys, the people who don't want you to figure out how to do this because they don't want more competition. Now uh, a lot of now nowadays the tables are being kind of turned because uh, a lot of these auctions now have gone online, so that intimidation factor is out the window. So if you guys want to learn how to become a successful auction uh, auction investor, well, uh, I'm going to leave a sign-up sheet down below where you guys can actually get a 30% discount for the program that I'm preparing. It comes with all the bells and whistles. We will have a monthly uh, meetup call too, where you guys can ask me questions, and there'll be a community that you can also tap into at all times. So if you guys want that 30% discount, it'll be gone once the program is ready. Go ahead and make sure you sign up down below. Okay, so now the biggest danger that I foresee in being in all cash or being in a high cash position is inflation. If you're in a cash position for way too long and you're in an inflationary market, well, your money starts to lose value. But in situations such as we are right now where we have high inflation, but we also have the Federal Reserve trying to combat that inflation with higher interest rates, well, that also causes mortgage interest rates to go up where if mortgage interest rates go up and then asset prices come down. So as long as we can beat the, um, I guess the loss of value in the dollar, as long as we can beat that out because we're getting uh, home prices coming down more uh, or quicker, then that's a good position to be in. And I believe that that is exactly the position that we are gonna be in. I feel that real estate prices from the top can come down easily in certain areas, 50%. Now, I don't think we're gonna get 50% uh, in inflation anytime soon in the same amount of time that we're gonna see that the price drop, but hey, we don't know what the future brings, right? Anything is possible. So that is probably one of the biggest dangers. So the question is, how do we know when we should start accumulating real estate? When is the right time to actually buy our next property or the first property or whatever the situation you're in? Well, I'll be honest with you. I have never looked for the bottom or to the bottom to uh, buy real estate. I've always looked for the opportunity, opportunity no matter uh, when it is. So let me explain to you what that opportunity looks like. If you can buy a property where the formula that I use is something that actually makes sense where the property will cash flow, or if it makes sense if you wanna flip a property. Now, I'm not into flipping properties. That's not really my bread and butter. Uh, I'll do it if it's a super, super home run and, and I don't have any interest in keeping it. But my go-to has always been uh, creating a portfolio of properties. And if it fits that formula, then it doesn't matter if we are at the bottom. It doesn't matter if we're at the top. You know, it just matters that that property fits that criteria. And if you wanna know what that criteria is exactly, well, check out this video right here where I explain all about it. I'll see you guys over there in just a few seconds. Thank you for watching. I love you and I will see you next time.